Hi everyone, thank you for coming today to listen to me talk about something that I think is very near and dear to me. I'm talking about Cornell University. Um, as some of you may know, I went here for undergraduate degree. I got married here to a Cornellian about a year ago. I worked for Cornell in New York City for two years, and now I'm back here in Ithaca to complete my MBA degree here at Johnson. So what makes Cornell so special? In order for me to properly explain that, I have to share with you some of my triumphs and my failures. Um, but first, before I get into my personal story, I'd like to show you a video of other Cornelians' perspectives and why they think this university is so amazing. I grew up in a tiny little town that nobody's ever heard of, and then I went to Cornell. I met people from all over the world, people of all different backgrounds. I was among them and learning from them. Coming here, sometimes you think you know everything. Cornell quickly teaches you that you don't. And I think it's a beautiful struggle we have as human beings, wanting to know so much about the world around us, to be hungry for knowledge. Not just knowledge, but the application of that knowledge in a way that is impactful in people's lives. The gorges, the waterfalls. To me, the campus is a metaphor for never-ending processes of evolution, transformation. Novelty is always around the corner. There's always an opportunity to challenge oneself, whether that's physically, socially, or, or intellectually. When I teach, one of the things that I hope my students get is this curiosity that drives us. The questions we ask keep changing, and they're really important. Being able to be in a classroom environment where you get all of those different perspectives has been really great for me in molding a sort of intellectual nuance. The difficult questions, you know, those are the, the ones that are, for me, are most worth pursuing. Elite and egalitarian. The sense of excellence, but also the sense of we accept the common person. We're a space where everybody can belong. That was true right from the beginning. Cornell's freshman class was 1868. The very next year, the first student of African heritage was enrolled, and a year after that, the first woman. This was not something that was common in American universities. I'm just so proud to be part of the Cornell story. So, this is me back on freshman move-in day, August 19th, 2004. Um, I remember this day very clearly because building up to this moment, I had daydreamed, spent hours, nights, thinking about my life at college. Who I would be, the people that I would meet, the things that I would do, the person that I would hopefully become. And so this moment marked the beginning of a lifelong journey that will have forever changed me and has brought me back here today. So I know a lot of you have probably felt FOMO and I'm telling you it doesn't just exist in business school. It exists also in undergrad and I felt it hard. I joined lots of things. Um, ski team, I joined a fraternity, cycling club, and a host of other activities. And I have to say it was amazing. I met some amazing people, made some of the greatest friends, and had the most amazing experiences that I'll hold forever. Of course, all of this comes at a price. So this is my grades for the first semester. Um, that is 2.6, yes. And as a straight A student, um, not something that I was used to. Um, I'm sure some of you have realized this by now. When you come to a place like Cornell University, there's a lot of really smart people. And so to stand out among an amazing group of individuals is very difficult. And at first, you know, I thought, well, this is just the first semester. This is the first of many. It'll all pass. Unfortunately, it did not. It only got worse. That is a 1.7, yes. <laughs> yes. And, you know, there's two failing grades on there. And unfortunately, that was the second time I took that course. And so, in case any of you were wondering what happens when you fall below the minimum academic standard, this is what happens. I was asked to put on, be put on leave. And so 
on the spring semester of what should have been my junior year, I decided to stay here in Ithaca, though. I was able to convince my parents that I should stay here in Ithaca to help me figure out life. And in reality, I just kind of wanted to stay away from them. You know, it was a rough time. I was able to convince them, though, that I could continue my studies at community college, TC3 alum, represent. Um, and then I filled the remainder of my time by working at the bike rack. And a wonderful established town in College Town. I don't know if you've seen it, but you should stop by. Barry is amazing. But anyways, needless to say, I had a lot of time on my hands. Um, here's a video of me over spring break with a friend of mine, Oscar. Uh, we went up to the vet school, decided to do some donuts in the parking lot because it was snowing so hard. And um, this is the result. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we do here. <laughs> so, anyways, um, you know, with, without friends like that, I don't think I would have really gotten through that tough time. Um, I, like I said, I had a lot of time on my hands. Um, they really helped me through it, and they helped me make a comeback, and, and, and in a big way. This is me coming back in the summer of 2007. I finally got that A+, plus. so in case you were wondering, A+, pluses are possible. It only took me three times. <laughs> and you know, there's some good things that came out of it as well. You know, as a result of my missed semester, I had to stay back for an additional one after all my classmates had graduated. But you know, it was at that time that I actually met the woman that would eventually become my wife. And what spurred this was an impromptu trip out to Watkins Glen. My friend Oscar that you saw in the video there reached out to me and said, hey, I've got these two friends. Um, I don't think you know, know them yet, but they're amazing, and you should come out hiking with us. And so even though I was you know, finishing up school, I was on my last semester, I was on the way out, I said, sure, why not? And it's changed my life forever. And so I've definitely made um, some amazing friends here. This is our wedding party here last year. Um, 11 of the 18 people in that picture are Cornelians. And so that's how much Cornell means to me, and that's how much it's changed my life. And you know, Thomas Jones in that video touched on a really, really important part that I think is the best part of Cornell. Egalitarian and elite. I would found an institution for any person to, to find instruction in any study. And you know, because of that, we're the world's largest Ivy. Over 14,000 undergraduates, over 2,000 professional students, 8,000 staff, and faculty. Together we make up a network of over 30,000 people. And that's not including the 250,000 plus alumni. So we're everywhere. And so I really hope that you guys reach outside of SAGE, find your Cornell experience, because it'll continue with you forever. So something that started back in 1995 was um, the Cornell Daily Sun put out 161 things to do at Cornell. Yes, it seems like a lot. Um, it is an ode to the 161 steps to climb up McGraw Tower. Here are some of the items on there. Of course, climb up the 161 steps uh, up McGraw Tower, watch a Chime Master play, hike all 12 waterfalls in Treeman State Park, skinny dip in BB Lake, have your picture taken in 80 White's lap, eat in one of all of Cornell's 30 plus dining halls, Hike uphill in the snow both ways. If you haven't experienced it yet, you will very soon. Um, go to a board of trustees meeting. They're open to everybody. Offer you two cents. Make an impact. And in case you didn't know, there's a rare manuscripts library. It houses the Gettysburg Address. You can check out the Gutenberg Bible. You can go on top of Olin Library, and there are musical tiles, in case you didn't know. Try playing the alma mater. If you don't know the alma mater, I very highly suggest that you learn it very soon. Drive the perimeter of Cayuga, uh, Cayuga Lake. It's over 80 miles, but it, there's amazing sites, amazing wineries. See the brain collection in Eurus Hall. It houses uh, one of the world's largest brains, Edward Ruloff. I think many of you know of him. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, I'd like to propose or invite you to help me create 161 things to do before leaving Johnson. Because you know, the, another amazing thing about this school is that we're, we're a sm small, tight-knit community as part of a greater, greater uh, hub. 
And for us, you know, there's a lot of things that we can bring in and continue with our experiences moving forward. Play a game with the Frozen, Hass, uh, Frozen Assets Hockey Club. Have lunch with the Dean. Join a JAMA session, in case you guys don't know what that is. You will soon, I suggest it highly. Go to the observatory on Mount Pleasant. Watch the stars with your friends. Have dollar beers at Big Red Barn on Fridays. Meet some other graduate students. Hear their opinions. Take a class outside Johnson. Um, there's some wonderful schools here. Repel, zip line, climb. Take the high ropes course with the Xinhua students. It's an amazing experience, trust me. Give a red talk. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to thank you for uh, listening, me, hearing me out. Um, I, like I said, I really encourage that you go outside of SAGE every once in a while. Cornell University has amazing resources, and I think it'll really enrich your experience. Thank you. Now, we'll open up the floor for 10 minutes of Q&A. Do we have any questions in the audience? <laughs> Thank you, David. That was awesome. This is not on. <laughs> Catherine, I can hear you. Oh, yep. great. Cool. Um, what was your most favorite um, thing to do? Um, and do you have a little story that you can put behind that? Most favorite thing to do? Um, I think I'd have to say it's... I think I'd have to say it's gorge jumping. So there's a couple spots uh, around campus, in case you guys don't know. Uh, I'd suggest that you go with someone who's been there before just to make sure the water's deep enough. But um, so my freshman year, uh, I'm sure all of you have experienced this as well in your, your undergrad days. You know, you're meeting lots of new people, making lots of friends. And uh, so a group of my friends said, hey, why don't we go gorge jumping? And I'll admit, I'm a little afraid of heights. But you know, you're trying to make friends trying to impress them, make a good first impression. So I went out with them out to a spot over by BB Lake. And as we got there, there was actually a group of upperclassmen jumping off, doing flips and stuff, and a little in intimidated. But you know, you're with a group of guys. You're like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to wuss out. I'll do this. I'll do this. And uh, right before I jumped in, this guy did a, did a gainer off, off this bridge and just totally muffed it and hit, hit the water just like flat on. It made a loud thump. And uh, you know, everyone's like, ooh. Uh, and then it was our turn. And I was like, oh, great. This is going to be awesome. Um, and we did one of those things where it was like, all right, we'll all go at the same time, right? OK. <laughs> one, two, three. Of course, I was the only idiot that actually jumped, but it was pretty awesome. Um, I survived. Harmless, but I survived. But it was still a good time. So I highly recommend that. Yeah. David. Hey, Fabrizio. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, pretty good. <laughs> Question for you, sir. Sure. How did your undergrad experience compare to your grad experience being in Cornell? Can you like, compare and contrast? You know, so far, I have to say, um, it's been similar in a lot of ways in that I think Cornell attracts a certain personality um, and uh, a diverse group. Uh, that I've experienced all throughout. But I think the nice thing about business school specifically is that you bring in people with lots of uh, diverse work experiences. They're a little bit more on the you know, experience side as far as things that they've experienced, places that they've gone. They've had that time where they've actually been able to afford to go places. Where I remember in college, we didn't go too many places because it cost money. Uh, you, know, you live on the ramen diet for a while. but. Uh, I, th I think there's just something extra special about the people here at Johnson because they're so also so ambitious. Um, you know, we're all trying to help each other out, and I think it's just more prevalent here than it was in undergrad. Yeah. Mitch? So what is one thing that you have not yet done at Cardell that you're looking to do over these next two years? Oh, there's a bunch. Um, so... Actually, I've been to the Rare Manuscripts Library, but I haven't checked out the Gettysburg Address. Um, there's a couple s swimming spots uh, in the gorge where you, there's kind of like a natural slide. 
Um, I haven't been there yet. There's a, a thing that's on the original 161 things to do list that says uh, to write messages out in rocks down in one of the gorges over the, the big bridge there. I don't know if you guys have seen them, but I've always wanted to say something there. I, I got to come up with something good, though. You know, It's going to last for a while. Uh, I mean, there's just so many things to do here. The 161 things is a very hard list to completely cover. Uh, between me and my wife, I'm proud to say, though, that I think we've done at least half of them. Um, I won't say who did the skinny dipping one, though. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I think the idea is more, there's so many things to do here. Maximize your time. At least set a high goal and, and try to reach it. You'll enjoy it. Um, so of the 30 places on campus to eat, which one is your favorite so far that you've been to? Uh, you know, it's been a while, but uh, I think there's Martha's Vineyard over in uh, Humec. Uh, I'm not sure if the menu's quite the same because, you know, places change. It's been, you know, more or less six or seven years. But uh, I went to the Temple of Zeus the other day. It's still pretty amazing. Um, Trillium, as always, they renovated it while I was here. So I was here for the original Trillium, which was not as good. And the new one is definitely way better. If you can get uh, a spot in line there, that's the only thing. It's, it's pretty popular. Uh, and then Synapsis holds a special place in my heart because uh, that's where my wife and I used to go grab lunch every day. So. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much, David. And thank right. you guys for your time. And don't forget to check out Silk Dark Chocolate Almond Milk tomorrow <laughs> at Battle of the Bands. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you.